Hello and welcome to this uh, conversation brought to you by IMEX uh, that is linked to an event taking place on the 6th of May on citizen-centered destinations and the future of business events. Uh, essentially, we're going to be talking to um, people in innovative destinations about what is happening in the world of policy making, uh, what are the changes, what are the priorities, uh, what are the big challenges in those areas, uh, and how can we in the business events sector align ourselves most effectively to those priorities and to those changes that are happening so that we can have stronger advocacy, better outcomes, uh, and better relations between the business event professionals and the policymakers. Uh, today, I am going to be talking about Estonia with uh, some very interesting people from Estonia. Uh, Kadri Karu, who is the Managing Director at the Estonian Convention Bureau, uh, and Lina Maria Lepik, uh, who is the Director at the Estonian Tourist Board, part of Enterprise Estonia, uh, and previously uh, Director at eEstonia. Um, so uh, I, I'd like to start by asking uh, Lisa Maria, um, could you perhaps explain your role, your background, and how the various agencies in Estonia relate to each other and also relate to government departments? Uh, yes, uh, glad to. Uh, well, my background is uh, very, very uh, different. So uh, the background comes from uh, finance sector, from film sector, then also the e-Estonia part and now tourism. So uh, the, the background is uh, quite diverse, but uh, but regarding the background, yes, in the in Estonia Briefing Centre, which is also part of e uh, Enterprise Estonia, uh, e Estonia, the e Estonia Briefing Centre promotes the digital society of Estonia. Uh, although we have been doing it for 12 years and more, uh, it seems that the world still needs to hear that. So we are happy to uh, promote and, and tell the other countries uh, how far have we gone. And we can definitely say that uh, this is the uniqueness of Estonia. We do can say that in, in, in the tourism field that we have a beautiful nature, we have uh, good food and uh, quite, uh, uh, quite a colorful uh, culture scene. But we do have to admit that uh, the one thing that uh, differs us, uh, difference us uh, from the other countries is the digital society in that scale. So uh, I'm uh, very much uh, well, the enthusiast of the <laughs> Estonia. And uh, as this Estonia part was also a part of government agency, working uh, on the Ministry of Economic Affairs, so uh, we have been always uh, not only promoting and marketing, but building also bridges and paths to the other governments uh, and also companies to uh, develop their uh, digital, uh, digital solutions or uh, digitalization as well. Mm -hmm. So it has been part of e-governance, but also very much also supporting the, the companies in their developments. So we are exporting uh, IT companies uh, in Estonia with a quite quite good uh, um, IT solutions, I'd say, because the Estonian market is so small that uh, this is not worth building IT solutions, so we need the world to come uh, buying our uh, good solutions. So I'm definitely um, very much, uh, well, kind of today also promoting the digital society all the way I can, so Kadri can back me up with, uh, with uh, research and development and other parts as well. <laughs> Okay, so I, I think it's wonderful to have somebody in your position in charge of tourism who actually sees a much broader economic viewpoint than someone who tr traditionally has come through the hospitality route. Uh, yes, and, and, and also as my background... Oh, sorry. As my background is also uh, private businesses, so therefore I have the sense of uh, what happens in a company uh, trying to export and, and uh, sell their services as well. So, uh, yes, mixing it all together uh, into the, the tourism source, I'd say, then, uh, then this is a very good, uh, very good package. And it's in Estonia as well, that uh, the, 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 the people's mindset and can-do spirit is a great selling argument. Okay. And Kadri, the Estonian Convention Bureau, very, very quickly, just give us a quick outline. How is that structured? Is it a membership organization, um, purely government? How, how are you set up? 
Thank you, Martin. Uh, Estonian Convention Bureau is a pri private public partnership PPP model here in Estonia and, and really a very, very successful case of um, you know, private sector and public sector partnership. Uh, so we are uh, uniting as an umbrella organization our uh, state. We are a partner and, and partly financed by Estonian Tourist Board. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, the three main cities as our members and uh, supporters and uh, a, a, a wide range of uh, uh, meetings industry suppliers uh, altogether uh, uh, 41 members we uh, unite and represent and uh, and uh, develop uh, Estonian uh, meetings industry with our team of uh, three people and as as earlier said we are uh, in uh, cooperation uh, with uh, Visit Estonia Estonian Tourist Board uh, uh, who also has uh, uh, one of their uh, target markets, so to say, is business and uh, conference tourism. So many activities we, we uh, carry out in, in partnership. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much. So let, let's kick off really by looking at what's happening in Estonia on the policymaking side through the pandemic. Uh, what are the big changes? What have you noticed uh, government ministers are worried about? What are the big challenges? Uh, and what is the current thinking in Estonia about building competitiveness? Those those are pretty big questions, but uh, Lina Maria, <laughs> let, let me hear what you say about that. Let's start uh, yeah, with one of them. Uh, uh, regarding the, how the policymakers uh, feel about tourism and uh, well, business tourism uh, as such, we have to admit that, that the pandemic has due to well, pandemic has given us the possibility to raise awareness about tourism as a whole to our policymakers. Uh, during the good times, uh, tourism was kind of uh, nice to have. But uh, as always, uh, when um, when you well miss, are missing something, you get rid of something. Then you starting to understand what the importance of it is. So uh, we are very happy that now the government understands better what the tourism is. Although uh, well, it took us a crisis to figure it out better. But it has helped us a lot to actually put the tourism back in the picture and also the business tourism and my segment as well, understanding that this is a segment that will recover very slowly and we have to work on it already now. And as we are currently with the Ministry of Economic Affairs also creating a new tourism strategy until 2025, then uh, business tourism and also uh, supporting all kinds of events, including conventions and, and business uh, events uh, in a broader approach, then uh, this is a good chance now to uh, point out that, that this is, needs to be acted now and needs to be acted very seriously. Mm -hmm. well, what, what about broader policy issues um, about economic development, about knowledge, about um, the e-economy? How, how is that, you know, how is the pandemic focused minds? And do you see any opportunities for the business event sector as a result of what's happening in other policy making areas? Well, we had actually a good start because uh, we have the digital society. So uh, when the uh, rest of the world uh, went home and started to build digital so digital solutions, uh, well, so well, different uh, to different extents. But we had everything in place. We just took our laptops, uh, went to our apartments where our kids started e-schooling as they've done before. So it was very smooth thanks to the digital society. So we we were already there to actually uh, start this uh, distance life we are living now. But, uh, but regarding the, the, the approaches, how to proceed, then uh, it's always the people divide into two groups. There are the ones that uh, well, well, they are suffering and uh, waiting for the solutions. And then are the ones that actually are working on the solutions in immediately when they see that we, uh, the world is in crisis. So when the lockdown, the lockdown started uh, last March, uh, then uh, within a few days already, we did a global hackathon regarding how to survive the crisis. So this is the kind of the mindset of the Estonians. Not all though, but quite a lot of them. 
that uh, quick solutions immediately we started to build uh, online studios how to virtually do events uh, and very high level also that the, the united nations meeting and everything was already done with uh, with virtual solutions so uh, that the estonians have built so that definitely um, is kind of the Estonian mindset that uh, let's start acting on it quickly. And that has helped us a lot uh, to actually adjust with the crisis. Okay, so so mm. what you're saying is that the, elect, the e-advantage that Estonia already had, which many people around the world, not as you said, are not that familiar with still, mm -hmm. gave you a head start on virtual and online events. And how do you see that impacting on the importance of business events generally? going forward well as i mentioned the virtual events uh, which is done in estonia in a very high level and from the start already and mm -hmm. already in may we held the first uh, virtual conference uh, which was very quickly uh, programmed mm -hmm. it had to be uh, off offline that actually the e governance academy where we're expecting the government representatives to come over but very quickly changed it to online within two months it's it's huge and kind of uh, even uh, even uh, going a bit outside of business events uh, last year also estonia held the wrc uh, rally estonia competition in estonia uh, the, the rally team found out about it that they are actually organizing it two months before the event but they managed to do it uh, in the middle of the crisis in the middle of the pandemic and without any uh, virus in, uh, infections or anything. So uh, that's a really good example that uh, Estonians can, uh, in a very short time of frame, do excellent events. And uh, this is a very good case study to actually uh, show and talk, talk about that, mm -hmm. uh, that we are able to do this because we are very tech savvy, we are very adjustable, and this mm -hmm. is kind of the way we do. Okay, and Kadri, in talking to, for example, association clients and the people that you regularly would bring in for face-to-face -face meetings, are you creating Estonian solutions for them in the virtual space? Um, all the, the online solutions that Lina Maria mentioned before that really emerged uh, very quickly in cooperation uh, with the local suppliers who adjusted to the new situation overnight that enabled uh, our associations, our universities, our businesses to continue with their planned events, either uh, doing it, them in online format uh, or uh, in hybrid format uh, during the summer months, um, for example. And uh, they, they uh, are eager, of course, to uh, see the return of face-to-face uh, -face, uh, events. There is a, a big hunger for live meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, um, of course, uh, recognizing the hybrid uh, element will be there in the future as well. But also, they, like in other destinations, I think they have seen the possibilities that the online uh, solution enable in, in broadening the audience and bringing in uh, uh, new uh, delegates, uh, new regions. OK. Um let, let's talk about um, policy making in the broader sense, because I, I think I'm really interested in, in that side. Um, in Estonia, from what I understand, business events have traditionally see, been seen as a high value segment of tourism. Uh, and yet we know from just our first discussion that business events have um, very powerful implications for economic development, uh, for addressing social problems, for the knowledge economy objectives of a destination. Um, how do you see things changing in Estonia? Do you, do you foresee that Estonian uh, government figures, that officials will start to understand the role of business events more broadly as a tool for economic development across the whole area from healthcare to technology to trade, et cetera? So wh where do you see things going in that sense? Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that the Estonian government uh, appreciates the, the convention and business uh, events uh, already because we have for years already this uh, support scheme for organizing events. Mm -hmm. So uh, we always uh, 
like to give a hand that they mm -hmm. will actually uh, happen. And we have a lot of good examples also uh, from the events that have taken, taken place that uh, the collaboration and the projects that come out of these meetings are a very uh, important fact to also introduce to the policy makers that, uh, that this is very much needed. And I do have to admit that also uh, business segment is a great driver to have more flights flying to and from Tallinn. Mm -hmm. So it is, a, um, is a, it is a problem for us that not uh, from every destination it's easy to come to Estonia. But uh, the business uh, events is a very good motivation to add more to actually be in the in the in the map in that sense mm -hmm. so this is a, this has always been working well but uh, right now yes of course the, the flights want to already fly and uh, the planes want to fly but the the, the business uh, segment we are missing but uh, regarding policy making um, yes it, it's always been important as the government also supports the the events and um, and well, giving a, one example more, even if the Estonia was uh, organizing that or the, the country uh, responsible for the um, presidency of the uh, European Union, mm -hmm. we had to do it uh, three months in advance or six months in advance because, uh, because of Brexit. So I um, managed to do that as well. And the experience that the policymakers also got uh, thanks to this event showed that the Estonians' um, readiness to perform, to quickly act, and also to organize events in a very, very high level. So uh, this was actually a very good, even uh, like a domestic promotion to Estonian event mm -hmm. organizers and business event organizers, mm -hmm. to that the government uh, members themselves could see that, uh, mm -hmm. well, this is something. Mm -hmm. I think in addition to what uh, Lina Maria already said, I, I think one uh, shift that we have recognized uh, compared to earlier is in, in one hand in the uh, tourism development plan already before the pandemic started and, and now when they, the new uh, tourism strategy is being prepared, uh, business events and hosting uh, those and other large uh, international events is seen as one of the priorities. So, in that uh, direction, uh, this is uh, one of the one of the se segments that it uh, is seen important. But uh, to to come back to your question, Martin, the positive development that we have seen during the last year and a half is that we are now. Uh, also discussing involving uh, business events as a tool uh, in achieving the uh, um, goals of other strategies. Uh, I mean, the uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, general economic uh, development strategy, the strategy for our uh, science and education development, because uh, although it, it's uh, very much part of the tourism uh, development uh, agency and the Ministry of Economics, uh, the, the sector, then the, the broader uh, value that it creates and, and how this uh, sector um, in its core essence helps uh, to achieve the goals of, of different uh, companies, universities, organizations, whoever is organizing the event, uh, that these discussions really have uh, taken off and as the strategies are in the development process, uh, we, we really hope that uh, mm -hmm. the crisis has given a positive impact. And also another uh, development is including uh, business events also in the uh, university long-term strategies as mm -hmm. a tool for internationalization of, of universities and re receiving or achieving their, their goals as well. Because that, that's something that's really impressed me with Estonia is the um, the outreach to international investors, entrepreneurs, uh, students, migrants to use Estonia as an international base. Uh, so do you see that? Is that is that can you explain that kind of policy that Estonia is following this internationalization of Estonia and how you see that linking back to the business event strategy? 
Um, as I mentioned, then uh, the Estonian market is so small. If you develop something in here, you have to uh, be able to export to the other other countries to make it feasible. Uh, but the same issue is that the country itself is small, but we don't have much people either. There's only 1.3 million people living here and we are uh, hungry for talents. So uh, in Enterprise Estonia, we also have a department of work in Estonia where we actually engage the talents to come to work uh, to Estonia and mainly the, the, the um, most, uh, most developing uh, companies. So we actually have a support scheme, the talents to come over and how their families could uh, adapt to Estonian life and make it easier to, uh, to bring the family along. So we have special programs for that as well. Uh, to yes, to engage talents, but also with the, regarding the investments, uh, our um, foreign investments agency uh, also in Enterprise Estonia is working together closely with us and Convention Bureau because the interests are quite the same. They actually, uh, to, to, and we are very very um, uh, uh, synchronized regarding the the, the focus uh, topics or the focus themes and also uh, regarding the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I, I genuinely think you're in a very uh, rare group of countries that is is deliberately trying to get people to come in and start businesses and move over there. And that it's so easy, so easy relatively as well. It is. Well, you can establish a company in Estonia within 30 minutes. The, the record is actually 18 minutes and you have an <laughs> online company established. But uh, b because we are so proud of it and using it uh, so widely ourselves, then also uh, we have built this uh, e-residency program, mm -hmm. which is kind of, kind of the startup start -up activity that our state actually did. Uh, so states usually don't tend to um, do so innovative, but our, our government was, and uh, the, the program has been ongoing for 10 years. Mm -hmm. It has uh, created uh, more than 31 million euros of uh, tax revenues to the state. And we have uh, more than 7,000 companies uh, as e-resident companies. So mm -hmm. uh, as the ease of uh, doing business is so good in Estonia, uh, so why to keep it to ourselves? Let's uh, share it with the others. And it is a it the act itself that the government did a project like this, mm -hmm. and the way it works and how uh, convenient it is to uh, to use Estonian platforms to mm -hmm. manage your business, it's it's a it's a great effect. Yeah, so I, I, they, I can see I can see huge opportunities down down the coming years of integrating that side of the policy making with what's happening in business events themselves when you're suddenly bringing in potential entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, people who are interested in working pan -Europe in, in a pan-European way, but don't know where to actually locate themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that there could be some fantastic opportunities for you there. And this is where the, 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 really the, the business events uh, strategies uh, relate to economic development strategies very, very directly and very clearly because they, uh, when we talk to the event organizers, this is often the uh, feedback that we uh, hear that what was the most, uh, the biggest value for, from these events, of course, the knowledge exchange, the, the, the new networks, but also actual partnerships and, and also people really considering starting their businesses and, uh, and new corporations or even, uh, even working uh, in Estonia. So there is a, a really direct link with uh, business mm -hmm. events. Okay. Uh, and I should add that, um, well, Estonia is, a, as I mentioned, very small country. So, uh, like we say, that uh, the prime minister is one one phone call away for everybody. So uh, there's actually a quick access to policymakers as well. Mm -hmm. And as the country or the digital society has been built uh, with public partner, public private partnership, it has always been like this. The government. Uh, always adds the companies and the company's initiative is very much supported always uh, by the government. So the, the model has always worked. And this is a very good, um, the Estonia itself is a very good test bed to test different ideas because uh, we are quick, we are uh, quick adapters and it's, come to, it's like the best place to come and fail fast. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. So, I mean, you mentioned the citizen there, and, and citizen identity. You know, citizen ID is probably the most advanced in Estonia of probably any country. It's been there for a long time. It's quite quite famous, I think. Um, but uh, how do you see business events contributing towards citizens, towards their well-being, their economic development, their knowledge capacity building? Uh, where does the citizen sit in your in the vision for uh, policy making in Estonia? Coming back to the digital society, I'm so sorry, I'm repeating myself all the time, but the, the digital society was also uh, uh, built on the, the thought that everything has to be citizen centric. So right. uh, what 20 years, 25 years already, they decided that the system should be citizen centric. So uh, it's been also kind of the mindset uh, that everything is done to, by people to people. So uh, regarding the events itself, uh, the, the, the events always have a wide scale of uh, different uh, sectors involved and, uh, and involving the Estonians because, well, Estonians are very proud about their country and they very much want to introduce what the, all the coolness we have here. So uh, I, uh, I do believe that in the business events, the Estonians are are um, engaged or invited to be part in always because we are the best ambassadors to show what what great stuff is being done here. Mm -hmm. And Kadri, you know, there, there was a mention of ambassadors there. Um, how extensive is your ambassador program encouraging uh, local leaders in business or, or universities to get involved? Uh, yes, we, we do an, have an ambassador program, that, a program that we run together with our uh, two main cities, Tallinn and uh, Tartu, and it covers uh, uh, more than 250 ambassadors and, and more than 1,500 people in our like, communication uh, scope. So uh, we see this uh, one of the most important tools actually in uh, uh, attracting uh, business events to the country, but moreover really uh, uh, creating uh, meaningful and, and long-term legacies also through these events. Uh, because uh, these ambassadors, they are the people who, who really are into uh, their fields. They, they know the international uh, uh, back, background, the, 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 what is the, the general context and also how uh, sharing Estonian uh, competence and success stories can uh, contribute to the discussions of uh, global challenges, problems and, and share our examples and uh, success stories. So we, we do have a very close cooperation with them and, and I do strongly believe that uh, and also, that also after the pandemic and in the light of the, these long-term strategies uh, for any destination, this is the key uh, to, to the success of uh, business events sector and really having an impact on a larger scale on, on economy on research and also uh, taking it down to the really citizen uh, level. Okay, thank you. Um, so tell me, what, what are the big plans that you have afoot for business events? What's your latest thinking on the big priorities, the, the segments you're, you're chasing when you anticipate having big face-to-face -face events coming back in? I'd let Kadri answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely want to uh, build our, uh, our sec uh, business event sector back uh, stronger and, and even, even, even stronger and even smarter than it uh, was before. So definitely the focus on these uh, uh, different uh, key areas uh, is uh, in the long term very important uh, to us. Of course, uh, the, the ICT sector that was uh, mentioned before uh, is in the focus and we see that many conferences uh, uh, come to Estonia because of these advan advancements that we have in, in different fields of life, uh, in digital uh, field, 
is it then a uh, digital cardiology congress of European uh, Society of Cardiology or uh, the International uh, Child Protecting Association? It, these are just a few of the examples. Mm -hmm. So clear focus on the economic uh, and scientific development areas and uh, dialogue and cooperation with uh, different uh, development agencies, the investment agency, the uh, uh, research Estonia to uh, identify together these uh, common uh, areas of focus and with joint effort and partnership uh, uh, unite the, uh, the business events uh, in these strategies and, and focus on bringing these events to Estonia. Mm -hmm. But of course we have this uh, challenge that uh, every business events organizer has how to survive in this uh, virtual uh, hybrid format that mm -hmm. we actually need the people to come over. Of course, this is me uh, speaking as a um, director of the tourist board. But mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but anyway, to build the connections, uh, to be physic physically me part and physically meeting uh, is something that, uh, yeah, we are very much um, missing. But mm -hmm. not everybody wants to come over now if we have a post-COVID world. So how to actually attract, uh, what is the value proposition to actually come over? We do have to admit that uh, although our digital uh, uniqueness is known, but not for not by everybody. Mm -hmm. So uh, for some, we are still a sketchy Eastern European country. Uh, <laughs> so uh, when, and if they come, they are very positively surprised uh, what they see in here, but mm -hmm. how to actually get them here? Is mm -hmm. uh, it's quite a challenge, but um, we are up for it. Mm -hmm. And are, do you have any plans, or have you thought about creating your own unique international events in any of these sectors? You mentioned, uh, I think it's really interesting that AI or IT can be linked to pretty much any topic under the sun and mm -hmm. make it more specialized. So even though you can specialize in certain types of conference, you can actually add IT expertise to anything that you care to mention. So let's be honest, everything is digital now. Yeah, ex exactly. So uh, are you planning to create your own test events to try and actually establish your own regular events which are going to pull in international visitors? Is that part of the uh, the thinking? I think here the, the CVB's DMOs can definitely be the initiators and, and the ones who are building bridges and, and uh, bringing uh, different uh, players around one table uh, and, uh, and also perhaps initiating uh, new events. Uh, in Estonian uh, example, for example, uh, we are uh, really uh, strong also in cyber defense, uh, the mm -hmm. NATO cyber defense uh, center being located in Tallinn and, and many companies also have been founded by Estonians. So, for example, different cyber uh, defense related um, conferences, not only in, like, in mini military field, but it's a, a broader mm -hmm. uh, topic as well. Uh, hosting and, and creating these kind of events. Of course, the CVB or, or DMO cannot be the, the one who really actually uh, establishes the event, but, uh, but through these uh, uh, connections, uh, initiates and drives these uh, possibilities. Uh, so so this, this is definitely something that uh, is part of the, the future business event strategy also for Estonia. And as Lina Maria also mentioned, this uh, uh, support scheme uh, as well uh, for events in Estonia. Also, the local governments are developing these kind of support schemes. And, and there also these focus areas come to play as well, that, uh, that uh, it can be uh, preferred uh, to, to support these uh, uh, special development areas. Okay. Um, let's talk about other destinations. Do you have any advice for other destinations on, is the first question. And the second question is, which destinations do you look to uh, for your own inspiration uh, that you also that you think are innovators out there? So what's your connection? Who do you look out to in the, the outside world? I'd let Kadri answer that again. <laughs> Uh, there are well, we we uh, are really. Uh, I, I personally must say, I'm really happy to be in this industry uh, where there are so many uh, uh, 
uh, great international colleagues and, and learning points from other uh, destinations, sharing points. And, and also this IMEX policy forum is a great example of, of this, how as an industry we can uh, do advocacy and uh, development uh, for, the, for the global meetings uh, sector as a whole. For us, of course, uh, uh, many uh, flagship destinations like uh, Australia or, or Scotland, for example, or Germany, the way they, uh, they uh, do research on the future events and, and how we could uh, uh, all uh, benefit uh, from this and uh, uh, relate our strategies better with these uh, developments uh, uh, that, that our clients, the, the event organizers have. Uh, these are all uh, uh, great examples uh, in the meetings industry and, of course, the colleagues who are uh, participating uh, the CIMEX Policy Forum from Singapore, from Copenhagen. Uh, and and there are, I think this sharing is, is very, very useful. And uh, if you think of or ask what is, uh, could be our advice, then I would say in Estonian uh, case, the local cooperation and involvement of different uh, uh, players, this public-private partnership and uh, uh, very like a flat, uh, let's say flat uh, discussions where everybody is around one table and all the key persons uh, can be contributing. Uh, for us, this definitely has been uh, one of the uh, keys to uh, success. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and final question for Lina Maria. Um, where do you see Estonia's competitive position in the future? You know, if you have to look, you know, 10 years down the line, where do you think Estonia will stand in the business events sector, but, but how that relates to broader economic development goals? Where, where do you see Estonia? What, do you, what are your aspirations? Well, I'm very ambitious, so I, I can see Estonia only in the top. Uh, is, it, uh, is it because of our uh, great uh, image? Is it uh, because of part of our uh, digital society or our researchers and scientists or, uh, or the can-do uh, society we have in here? But uh, anyway, we see that, uh, that, that the ambition is high, that the competition is very tough. But, uh, but with the, our small uh, but very uh, agile country, mm -hmm. we can make business events uh, smoother and follow-up projects or collaborational projects easier doable. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to add up that, um, as we are all waiting for the, the digital vaccine passports and how to actually travel and how will this happen, then uh, why not to actually promote coming to Estonia when the traveling is again possible that the WHO, uh, this uh, global trust framework uh, project that they are now doing for the vaccines certificates, it is done with Estonian government and with Estonian companies building the network. So uh, mm -hmm. the, actually the small, the tiny country is working together with the WHO o to, to solve the, the health crisis we are in. So that could be kind of the golden ticket already that uh, come and see what is that country who has been able to do such a wide scale solution. We, we were right at the end of the interview, Lina Maria, you threw something out that is uh, quite remarkable, really. Uh, but can you, can you explain a little more detail uh, what is this project between Estonia and uh, WHO on the health vaccine side of things? Uh, well, this actually uh, started uh, before the pandemic, that, that the WHO would use the Estonian uh, uh, secure data exchange platform called XROAD, uh, also to exchange platform between different countries uh, regarding health-related uh, issues. But as the, the kickstart was already done before the pandemic, uh, it was very kind of a logical step to see what else is there when we need uh, rapid solutions. So uh, this is, of course, it's uh, mainly a legal framework to make it happen, how to secure that so uh, sensitive uh, data and also how to exchange it uh, in a very high uh, secure way. 
mm-hmm. and that in the same time how to uh, collaborate with the, start the, the the country's collaboration uh, within the VHO, VHO framework. So uh, that's huge. It has mm-hmm. been ongoing for a year already. Uh, the different countries are already promised to be in the pilot. So uh, right now the legal framework uh, is taking um, taking uh, the, the, the kind of the already final steps uh, mm-hmm. and we hope to s- soon enough uh, with some of the countries to start uh, using it. And it's working very much together with the uh, EU and mm-hmm. the uh, green digital uh, passports. So mm-hmm. uh, that solution could actually uh, uh, be on top of uh, this um, basic global uh, trust framework. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, it is definitely a, a quite an ambitious plan, but uh, but we are very hopeful that it will uh, soon enough be actually live and saving us all. So what what this actually implies, and I think it's very exciting, is that developments for many decades for, for a number of decades in Estonia in e security, uh, citizen centric uh, ID protection. Um, entrepreneurship amongst uh, tech startups uh, and relationships with uh, institutional bodies like WHO and EU are all coming together for something which is extraordinarily relevant, not just for the pandemic, but for broader health issues across a whole range of fields going down the line. So your policymaking initiatives within Estonia are actually creating a fantastic set of brand new opportunities to attract events, build events, um, and excite people within Estonia themselves to get involved in this field. So I think it might have been a last throwaway comment, but it's actually a very exciting topic that I think is going to get even more coverage um, when we talk at the, the live IMEX event in May. So with with that, I'd just like to say, uh, Kadri, uh, Lina Maria, thank you very much for your insights, uh, for your information about what's happening in Estonia, uh, for sharing some of your thoughts about what makes things special on the policymaking front in Estonia that other nations can learn from. Uh, I'm sure that uh, many other destinations will be beating a path to your door to learn more about what Estonia is actually doing in these specialized IT sector fields. Um, and I'd like to finish by just saying that that it's so important that we in the business events industry really do understand what is happening at the moment in policy making. Where are the new priorities? What is changing? What is emerging uh, as a result of the pandemic? And also what was there beforehand? Because if we cannot make our industry as relevant and as aligned as possible with those policy-making uh, priorities, we will increasingly fail in order to get ourselves taken as seriously as we should do. So, ladies, thank you very much. Uh, I wish you every success in your business event strategy going forward, uh, and I look forward to taking these ideas forward at the IMEX event on the 6th of May. As are we. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.